Good morning, one and all. We are out at the home place. This is our back 80 acres of land where we have zero power, electricity, no running water, and we are in the process of building a yurt. Well, <laughs> the yurt is done. We got weather coming, but we are not done done yet. Let's go inside. The kids are busy building. Hi, kid. That's Hi. my that's my hippie daughter, Cassidy. I'm oh, Jojo, Jojo. I'm not a hippie. Jo, jo, jo. Not a hippie. <laughs> and there's Tarzan, her hippie boyfriend. And today we are going to be doing uh, the floors in here. Um, we're going to be attempting to do something we've never actually done before. In fact, you had your first experience right here doing yeah. these countertops. So the black walnut countertops that you see down here are by a company using a product called Stone Coat Countertops. I have limited experience using their stuff, but the experience I do has has been absolutely the best product I've ever used. Now the first challenge we have is to maintain the temperature inside of the yurt. As we go out here, we got the deck built on the back, but if you look at the water, you can start to see that it's freezing over. And we've got flurries coming down, so she's not warm outside, but she's not bad inside. It's actually probably 25, 30 degrees warmer in here. Yeah. And we've got the wood just, burner going. Just that going, not, not that at all. So not that we started all. that this morning, so that shows us it gets warm really fast, actually. Mm-hmm, yep. So, that's a good sign. Yeah. That is a good, good sign. Frankie's so been excited. very busy this morning. Hey, did you already run this yet, Frankie? What? This, yeah. So you have been running this heater in here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. She lied. Yeah, because I ran it until it was out of gas, and that's why I wanted to go get gas, so. Oh, were you able to get gas? Yeah. Thank yeah, you, sir. It's pretty warm in here already. How cold was it? Was it pretty cold in here when you got in here this morning? Yeah. Uh, did it, that heater itself warm it up pretty good? Well, I couldn't light the stoves because I had to cut the pipes down and stuff, so I had to light this first. Yeah, I mean, did that? How did that do? I, so I'm trying to get oh, a, a feel for right, it. You'll find out early. But it'd be nice if it just circulated. This takes a long time. Did you? I went up there and talked all that and cut that tarp there and everything just went. I say it's that. It's hot up there. Oh, I bet. I bet. I bet it would be good if we could get a fan up there blowing down, right? Right, but how can you? Unless you solar, get solar one. A, solar, a little solar panel on the top. Well. Because there's a lot of light up there. There's battery powered fans. Yeah. Yep. You could just see, and then you just got to get yeah, your butt up it there. Yeah, like permanently yeah. mounted and it Put just it had a three. solar panel on the back. So you would oh, never have to two. touch it. I got it you on two. I mean? Okay. So, now you guys remember now you know how to start it, right? When it runs out of gas, you gotta shut it off. Yeah. Off. Leave it off, then go change the tank. Then come in here, put it on pilot, push it down for 10, 15, 20 minutes, or seconds. Yeah. And then, and then hit the lighter. Then hit the lighter. Okay. When you push holding that when down. When you're holding this down, then it'll. All right, it'll let's light. get to cleaning. If you don't see me doing a whole lot in this video except for supervising, well, that's because this is the kid's yurt and they need to learn to be self-independent. That's a good Polish way of saying that they need to do it on their own.
Now one of the challenges of pouring an entire floor like this is once you start it, there really is no easy way to stop it because this is a circular room with no thresholds. So it doesn't give us the natural ability to start and stop at any one location. So this entire room needs to be done before we leave. All right, the floor has been cleaned and wiped. We got an issue. The condensation from the stove is still coming down because of the fresh pour, so that is going to be a problem. I'm gonna probably try to put a torch over it to dry that up, but it's gonna still be a problem no matter what. I don't know what we're gonna do. But the mixologists over here, what's the plan? Tell them your plan, guys. No clue. <laughs> we want a tree of some sort. A tree, and ideally you want the tree coming in this way, roots kind of going that way and that way. Yeah, and branches and leaves. And so branches this way. That's going to be the kitchen area here, back door here. So then the canopy of the tree will be on this end of the room. Is that correct? Yeah, so I guess the middle would be brown, and then the sides would be green and then blue. And then we can just add, like with these this color stuff, We'll just add like cool designs. I don't know. So the idea is when you walk in, you're actually walking up the tree, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I right. mean, ideally, that's the goal, but. So here's all the different. They got. They give you little this color one's packets. My favorite. She loves the Mystic Moss. I just like that. And then that the base word. colors here. Lots of base colors. All these containers are needed. Now the flooring resin is not the same as the countertop resin. It has a different mix ratio to it. So. And it's a little bit of different operating is it capacity. Just thinner or? So, I guess the next thing is, is you guys got to start mixing your colors. And I think since our work table's on this side, we start pouring that way. We pour this way and we work our way out. And the reason we're working our way out is because right before we leave, we got to stoke up the stove so that it stays as warm as possible. And then that way, we can still crack that door open and all you got to do is reach in and turn that up and we can have constant heat overnight. So the kids got creative like, last night and they like made something from saw. <laughs> they made spiky shoes. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Yeah, want to explain what why you did that? Uh cuz our feet would smash the epoxy and when we poured the countertops, I was barefoot and I still have epoxy in between my toes. So, and that was a counter, not a floor. So I'm trying to. So this is what happens here. With these shoes is they get you just up off from the ground enough that instead of when the epoxy's down, you're not squishing it to the side. I guess you should wear them, huh? No, you don't right. need them. The only time you need them is when you're doing popping bubbles or if you got to walk over your pour. Well, if you're not walking over your pour, pour, don't wear them. When we actually pour it, don't you think we should wear them? No. Not unless you plan on walking on your pour. I kind of did. Okay, well then you got to wear them. But there's, those are going to be ankle twisters and they're going to be puncturing little tiny holes in the floor, so I wouldn't wear them more than you have to. Oh, okay. Alright, first test of the shoes. Am I putting holes everywhere? I am, but they're tiny. Yeah. Might help the boxes too. So I think we're good, right? How does how comfortable are those shoes to walk in? I just feel tall and pokey. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't want to wear them until you need them, but at least they work. I think work. I'm gonna wear them while we do it, so I don't have to like we pour over here, and as it's coming, we can't do anything. Do whatever you want to do. You get, what are you starting with the tree trunk? How much trunk. color should I put in one of these? Wait, before ones? you pour it, let's answer that. Okay. What? How much color do you use? As much as you like, but that's all the color you got, so it's got to last over eight different pours. Here, use okay. it. you can use a little cup to scoop. Mm -hmm. You can scoop it into a cup. Or is that too big? See, this is where when you get the teamwork, you guys get one color. So we I don't pour add... It up. I would pour it in the top, not the bottom. Oh. Uh, right? Because you're going to have to peel that off from the bottom now. All right. Oh, I was just... I thought you said something. Nope. Nope. Go ahead. 
Whenever you're ready, we got to put these into your mix bags, then you mix your color in, stir it in, and then you start pouring. So. So, can you mix multiple colors in one? Yeah, yeah. You mix. of course you can. Like, oh, okay. just like I can add these powders in there. Yep. After I get it stirred, like right now, if you mix it into the bottom like this, it's gonna have a dry spot in the bottom unless he thoroughly mixes that bottom up. So that's okay. I mean, you can do that, but you're gonna want to pour it into these, pour this into these buckets, then add your color on top, stir your color in, and then go do your pour. Right. I just, yeah, as we go, if we have like a brown bucket, I want to add more different browns to it. Yeah, that's that's why I'm mixing up individual browns and then you just like... It looks like it tastes good. <laughs> it looks like it tastes good. What is that? What color is that? The tree trunk? Uh, I think we're gonna, we're mixing brown. up individual colors, but then we're gonna pour it back into a larger container to make the tree trunk, but it'll just be like a textured color. So are you starting with the tree trunk? Yeah, we're gonna start at that. I end guess of the so. Room. Okay. So we'll make sure that the powder is mixed up thoroughly because the powder needs to be yeah, completely no, saturated. No dry spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll just do if like that. If you want, Dad, you could get sticks outside. No, I got a whole bag of them right here. We got them right oh, there. Okay. Can you hand me one? Yes. Because we're not we're supposed to not mix them, right? Right. Unless it's all brown, then I guess it probably don't matter. No, you want the highlight colors. If you're trying to mix separate colors, you want the colors to stay, stay separate. As soon as you mix them, they So now that has to be. We have to move it, right? Okay. Yep. With a broom or. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sneaking out. For one, I gotta get some air. It's like a sauna in there with just that little wood-burning stove going and all the fumes. Two, they're trying to paint with this stuff. And that's not what I think really is the purpose. Now, I want you I want you guys to be the judge, but they're trying to like drop a picture with epoxy resin and this stuff is supposed to be more natural, organic, kind of let it do its thing. So you got the trunk of the tree, and then grass, and then right. 
That's the sky, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I added white to this batch, and it came out um, opaque rather than like, It came out clear. way brighter okay, than cool. see-through, yeah. All right, well, so you're mixing colors and getting it to go. You're using a broom head to get it into all the corners. Yeah, I'm just using the same one. Cause... It seems to be working. Yeah, I think the brown's dried up, the brown room. <laughs> So one word of caution, the solid line, if they don't start to blend the colors into it, will dry that way and just be more challenging to get it to all flow together. So uh, everywhere there's a hard line like that, if they let it dry before they get the next batch in, it's going to just be more difficult to make this all feel like it's one continuous piece instead of components put together. Like crap right now, but it will look. Good. I'm just not really sure. I'm scared to. That's pretty good. It's a big ass. I ain't seen any changes. So go. Well, it is kind of dry. I don't want to. Yeah, you're getting. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't go or uh, go around to the outside and do something, but it'll fill in. Just go for it. You're going to need to get them colors blended before it completely dries here. I kind of want the right, Mystic well, Moss one. We still have to do... Did you mix Forest Green and Mystic Moss? It's a little bit of both, yeah. Well, I'll just do both. For this section. Oh, I'm scared to step on it. I don't want to do it. <clears throat> Alright. Yeah, the wood we can like kind of chisel it off, and then I'll mix up a, this is a cup of just white, like sparkling white. Why do you come over that? Add clouds every so often. guys here is the floor and there is the artist right there how do you how do you like how your project turned out um it's great it turned out a lot better than i thought it would for sure really yeah we went for a, a cool design and then halfway through realized we were trying too hard <laughs> yes yes i love it so Trying too hard is a good way of putting it. Yeah, so then we just kind of... I don't know, I would totally recommend epoxy floor for anyone that yeah. is has zero experience and has never done anything and wants something cool. Can't really tell because of the snow right now, but when the light and the sunlight is in here and stuff, it looks crazy cool. If the epoxy does its own thing. Yeah, totally. It's and once you give up and just let it do it and just try to try to flow with it, you're gonna be. It's gonna do all of this sort of stuff. So all them weird, funky lines when you saw her just whipping paint down epoxy resin, that's what it created was that marbling effect, almost like a burl wood. You know what burl wood looks like? That really cool design in that wood where it's just yeah, the, with the wormy. Yes, that's what this looks like, is burl wood. Yeah. And then it just kind of, I love how it flows together. Yeah. And you got, it just kind of like seamlessly goes, even in these areas where you got a big contrast, it's still an interesting element. Yeah, you don't really have to try very hard. It just no. It kind of does its own thing, and 
You're just the medium. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of direct and guide, like a traffic director, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to put like some gymnastics stuff up here. So that's why this like random thing is right there. It's supposed to go along with the room. I don't know. I think that's cool about epoxy too is you can like, it's very organic and flowy. So mm -hmm. you can make it like go with your room that you specifically have. Now one of the bad parts about epoxy resin is it's slick. It's disgusting. Like the process of doing it, I probably still have epoxy stuck in my toes. Oh, right well, now. I'm talking about like right now, it's slick. It's oh, like yeah. super slippery, right? Yeah. But what you're talking about is actually putting the epoxy in it, is yeah, messy. Wear like 12 layers of gloves for sure. I was barefoot, I'm pretty sure. That was my mistake. But yeah, when you walk in here, it's pretty freaking slippery. It is super we were, slippery. We were like ice skating the other day on it but we're you know we'll just have some rugs we'll have like one right there and one right there and by the entrances i think it'll and help. there is a top coat but the yeah, top coat she... takes the gloss off from it mm -hmm. and we don't have that on yes and but the top coat like i have it in my shower and my shower is not slippery at all you can walk in the shower and not yeah, not do. feel like you're in an ice skating rink this feels like an ice skating rink a little bit yeah so a little top coat would go a long way but that's it for this one. I'm going to guess she's now that she's got some practice with epoxy, she's going to be doing other stuff. Yeah, did you see? Well, the counters are all covered up, but <laughs> this is something that I tried that I was told not to by the epoxy dude. He said, don't ruin the freaking walnut tablets or whatever. <laughs> They're cool. Well, Here, show these ones. As long as you like these it. These ones are the best. I do like it. I needed a touch of plants. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see it just fine. So she actually baked them, not baked, but laid them into the epoxy resin. Yeah. Touch of plants. There's not a single person that lives anywhere within eyesight of you at this point. But you need a touch of plants. Your neighbors are trees, fields, and, wa and lakes. Dead. None of them. They're none of them are dead. They're just in a deep sleep. Yeah, they're hibernating. So it's nice to see Alright, you guys. Well, that's the epoxy resin video. Hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see how these guys transform and get their life going out here, I got to add, you, you can ask her because she doesn't want to be on tape. She never wants to be on tape. It's like pulling teeth. It's like, <laughs> come on, Cass, we got to do this. No, nope, we don't want to do it. Well, so, it's not the camera. It's like the millions of people behind the camera that are judgy. But you don't like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> but the camera itself is fine. Yeah, the, the piece of plastic yeah, is okay. It's, it's just all you guys that pick <laughs> on her that she doesn't like. <laughs> and, you know, she moves out into the middle of nowhere to get away from people. Exactly. Not and to turn the camera here. on. Yeah. To, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but, what, what's your dog doing out there? I thought she went across the lake. No, she's out in the field. White dog in a white field. I'm this is. She was so to. scared of getting in the gravely at first, like terrified of it. And then she figured out we come here whenever she gets in, and now she like jumps in it. Runs she's, to it? Yeah. She knows what gravely means getting off the, the leash and getting out into the wild. Doing. Hey, you what are you doing out there? What? She's a mountain dog. Dude, it was so cold over here because this is a windy spot too. Honestly, it's so nice right now. But when there's wind, oh boy, she she gets these icicles that are like this big in between her toes. Oh, I see that. And she can't even, you seen that? Yeah. She I can't see. even like walk. She's like, what do I do? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you need to be built better. <laughs> I'm going to build in her shoes. That's it for the crazy floor pour by the two noobs. That's it for this one. God bless. Go get them, you guys. You want to see more videos of how she transforms it? Say, Cass, let's show us some more.
See you in the next one, you guys.